Hi guys, Arthur here from Homeowner DIY. In this video, I'm going to be replacing the oil pan on a 2002 Toyota Tacoma. Now, this is a rear wheel drive. It's only two wheel drive. It's a relatively easy job. Everything is accessible with minimal effort. So I think that this job is very DIY friendly. So what we'll do now is material and tools. All right, this is the materials list. So I have a new oil sump pan. This vehicle doesn't have a gasket, so you use a liquid gasket maker just like this. 5W30 oil, latex gloves, degreaser, penetrating fluid, paper towels, and then some cardboard to catch any oil that drips onto the ground. Guys, this is the material list for the show, so what we'll do now is the tools list. All right guys, this is the tools list. So I have an extension cord. I've got a couple blocks. Uh, the blocks will only raise the truck by three inches, but every little bit helps when you don't have a hoist. My socket set, oil pan, eighth inch by three eighths adapter. This is for the cordless drill. Short extension, this doesn't actually come with the set. Big flathead, small flathead, steel bristle brush, Box in and open in wrenches, lights, safety glasses. For this job, there's going to be chemicals in their overhead, so make sure you have your safety glasses. And then I have a small sledgehammer. This is what I need, believe I need for tools on this job, so let's get started. All right, guys, so to get started, the oil pan needs to be drained out. I highly recommend wait until the vehicle is cool. So this is the sump plug. What I actually did was, um, this has been stripped out. So I, I put JB Weld to uh, hold it in place. This truck has 275,000 kilometers. I think it's like 160,000 miles, something in that range. But this truck uh, goes through so much oil, you don't need to do oil changes. That's why I did it. But I'm gonna remove the sump plug here and we'll get the oil out of it to start. All right, so we'll take out the stripped sump plug. Okay, so the oil pan has all the bolts that go around it. I believe all these bolts are the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my penetrating fluid and I'm gonna give these bolts a shot of penetrating fluid so guys two things here first of all don't be right under the bolt that you're going to blast with penetrating fluid and second thing is make sure that you have safety glasses on I'm sure it's not fun to get penetrating fluid into your eyes but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna give all the bolts a shot of penetrating fluid I'm gonna give it about 15 minutes and then I'm gonna come back and start cracking these loose all right, so this cover also has to be taken off. So there's one, two, three, I believe there's four bolts. And then you can see the one, two bolts that are hidden in behind it. If you don't take that cover off, you're never gonna be able to get the oil pan out. All right, I'm gonna start with this pan, uh, this plate here. So these bolts are all 14 millimeters. So this has a bolt with a nut on it, bolt with a nut on it. And then these two, I believe are just Bolt. So what I'm going to do is take them all off. All right, so this is the cover. Long bolt goes to the left. Uh, the shorter bolt goes to the right. And then the two really short bolts go in this orientation. So guys, the indentation goes towards the inside there's grease on the road side the outside if you look at the other side you see how much cleaner it is so that is the way that this flywheel cover plate goes on all right so i'm gonna take this cover off so we have one two three bolts they're all 12 mil make sure that you give it a shot of penetrating oil each <clears throat> give it about 10 minutes for the penetrating oil to do its work and then I always like to crack my bolts loose especially small ones with uh, 
with a ratchet before using a cordless drill. A cordless drill can snap with all the, the torque right off the bat. So I prefer to do it by hand to loosen them, just crack them loose, and then go ahead and take them out with the cordless drill. All right, so crack these so loose. Okay, I already did this, but um, crack them loose with a ratchet and then I'm gonna grab my cordless drill. And then take all three out. I believe those are the only ones holding on this. I don't know for sure, but I'll take these out and we'll come back if there's another one or two that need to be taken out as well. All right, so these three have been removed. There was, there is one more bolt here up in this hole. I don't know if you can see it, but anyways, I'm gonna give a quick shot of penetrating oil, wait a few minutes, and then I'll take this out, and I believe that is it for this cover. All right, so let's just take this out. So my knee is what's holding this up right now, but with that removed, I'll be able to take the entire cover here off. All right, so this is the cover. So the, this is the front, where the front bumper is, one, two, three. So there's one bolt here. So guys, these three bolts are the same. And then this one here is a little bit longer. So there's one here, and then there's another one that should be here, but it's missing on this cover. But for this cover here, there are five bolts altogether. All right, so with this cover removed, we have our bolts all here. So I've already sprayed all of these. But guys, once again, what I suggest is crack all the bolts loose with a ratchet first. And then for the ones that you can actually reach, use a cordless drill. And then for the last remaining ones that you can't reach, just use a ratchet to take off the remaining bolts. Now, these are oil sump pan bolts. They are small, they're short. They don't need a lot of torque to snap off. So be very careful. When you put them back together, be very careful they don't cross thread the bolts either. When cracking these bolts loose, I'd say go every second bolt and just get them cracked loose. You don't need to go all that far. And then you can go ahead and go with the cordless drill for the rest of them. So for the pan bolts, there are two nuts. The rest are bolts. They're all the same length, so you don't have to worry about if anything goes into any specific location just go all the way around take them out you're going to have to switch between long and short extensions it'll be slow and steady but you'll get it all done fairly quickly all right so our new pan i put in all the bolts so these two nuts don't necessarily go here but make sure as you go along that you have all the parts before you continue on all right so it's time to now try to pry off the oil sump pan so I'm gonna take a big flathead screwdriver and I'm gonna go in between. Now the key thing here is to be gentle. You don't wanna scratch the mating surface of this. All right, so you can see where I have uh, entered the pan uh, between the two where they meet. So now that the flathead has gone in far enough, all you have to do is pry gently on the pan. Now what I do suggest is work your way around, pry stick in a screwdriver elsewhere, and then try to pry with two, scru two screwdrivers at the same time. Again, be gentle. You don't have to be aggressive and the last thing you wanna do is scratch the mating surface on the engine block side. All right, so I think I've loosened this off enough where I can take it uh, take it out. So I, I put a screwdriver over here, put one over here, and I tried to gently pry back and forth. All right, it took me a little while to figure out how to take this thing out, but I'm gonna show you guys. So there's an indentation there, so what you're going to do is slide it down. And here we have our oil pickup, our crankshaft, our flywheel. Dipstick is over here.
But guys, now that the old oil pan has been taken out, any remnants of sealant like this here, this can all be removed. Uh, I'm going to take the degreaser. I'm going to wipe around the block side of the mating surface and then I'll get ready to get the new pan ready to go. I'm sure if you go lightly with a flathead screwdriver, you're not going to damage anything. So to scrape off all the old sealant, either a small flathead, a putty knife, steel bristle brush, use those three tools together and then you should be able to get all the old sealant off. Alright, so I got the old sealant off. I used, a, I went between a brush, small flathead screwdriver, and a, a bigger screwdriver. Guys, take your time. Be careful that you don't go scratching and gouging this surface here. But with that done, I'm going to now gra grab my degreaser. I'm going to uh, spray it onto a paper towel. And then I'm going to wipe all the way around. Okay, so that looks okay for the most part. There are some little areas like here that I'm gonna go ahead and, and take off. But like I said, just go easy with the screwdriver or with the brush. The brush is not really gonna scratch with the screwdriver well. This is a thing of finesse, not about speed and aggression. All right, so I'm comparing the new and old pan. Unfortunately, you can't compare parts until you're this far into it, but everything looks to be okay These everything works out everything matches up now don't make my mistake I made just a moment ago Don't take this and then try to compare it by flipping it upside down This onto here because it's not going to line up properly So just avoid that mistake all right, so we'll take our degreaser and I'm going to just spray this down. Make sure that you have your safety glasses on when you're doing this. But I like to be thorough about my cleaning when I'm doing something. And I'm just going to leave this here for the next little while. I'm going to continue on with the job and that'll give the degreaser a chance to break down all this muck. All right, so we have our sealant here what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut they say you use about a quarter inch so i cut that there i mean that looks like a good size bead so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go all the way around and then i'm going to go back and go around all the bolt holes after i'm done So with this liquid gasket maker, the tube is a one-shot deal. Anything that you don't use, you're going to be discarding. So I don't think it hurts to give it a lot. You can even do two beads around if you want to. Just make sure that you don't make a complete utter mess when you reinstall. All right, with that all done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the pan back onto the engine block. All right, so I've set up the pan. It's in position now. You want to be very careful about not mushing the pan back and forth and messing up your gasket. But I got this up into position. To help align the pan, there's a couple of studs that come down from the block. That's where the nuts are and the rest are bolts. Figure out what the easiest bolts are. I just used a cordless shield just to get them started. Once those are started, the easy ones with a cordless drill, I don't think you're going to be able to really cross thread all that easily. I mean, you really have to make a big mistake to do it. If you're unsure, just take your extra time and use a ratchet. Right, so with some of the bolts in, now that the pan is, is holding up, I'm going to do the back end just to suck it up. But make sure that you go one over here, one on the other side, one over here, one over on the other side. You want the pan to go up 
together as one big unit so it stays straight. Also, with these bolts, be very careful about uh, starting them. Like the, the few easy ones, I started with the drill, but if you cross thread, you're just gonna strip the, the nuts and bolts. So now for all the harder ones, I'm gonna go ahead with a ratchet and I'm gonna do it by hand so I can feel for torque if it feels normal or if it feels like it's being cross threaded. If you cross thread the bolts, you strip the bolt and the threads in the block. All right, so what the instructions say for the liquid gasket is to tighten everything up until a little bit of the sealant squeezes out. Now with the pen tightened on, the instructions for this product says, leave it for an hour and then in an hour from now, I'll come back and then I will tighten everything up one last time. It should be about an extra half a turn. All right, so it's been about an hour now, so I'm gonna do a final tightening. I recommend just use a ratchet because once again, these bolts are very easy to snap off. So the way I am gonna do this is I'm gonna do this corner here, I'm gonna do the corner over there, I'm gonna do that corner there, that corner there, middle, middle, and then I'm gonna start from here and then I'm gonna go every second one and go all the way around. Once that is done, I'm going to fill the truck up with oil and then I'm going to run the truck to make sure nothing is leaking. So before we put this cover back on and this big cover over here, if you have a leak, well now you have to take them all off all over again to fix your leak. So I think it's better to make sure that nothing is leaking before you go ahead and put the remaining parts back on. All right, so it's time to fill oil. Guys, once again, it says on the cap what kind of viscosity that we need, 5W30. So I always like to, when I'm filling oil, I always like to pull the, ha uh, the dipstick out about halfway. The reason is that it's going to give me a nice clean reading. For this truck, it took about 90% of the jug of oil, so there's not much measuring to do. All right, it's probably tough to see, but I'm about three quarters of the way up, so we're within the upper end of the operating range. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open the garage door and start the truck, and I'm gonna run it for a few minutes to make sure nothing is leaking. All right, so I'm gonna start the truck and run it for a few minutes, and then we'll check for leaks. So run the truck for a few minutes. You don't want the engine to get up to operating temperature because the flywheel cover still needs to be put back on and then the lower cover still needs to be put back on. If you allow it to go to operating temperature, then you're gonna have to wait a while for the truck to cool down before you can put these two covers back on. All right, so taking a look all around the block, I, I don't see anything leaking around the pan. Everything looks good. So the last things to do is I'm gonna put this cover back on here and then I'm gonna put the upper, upper cover here and that'll be it for the job. If you have gotten to this part of the job without issue, then you don't need to watch me do this. So what we'll do now is an overview of this job. All right guys, so that concludes this job. So in my opinion, on this vehicle, this is relatively straightforward. You only have two covers that you need to remove and then everything is in front of you. The two key takeaways for this is be prepared to get dirty as well as make sure that you have safety glasses and you're not underneath the block when you're either tightening up or loosening bolts. You have cleaners and then penetrating fluid oil and all this other stuff that I'm sure is not a good thing if you get into your eye. The time on this job. The time was about four hours. So keep one thing in mind that for this product, 
the gasket maker, it says to wait an hour. A non-motor shop is not going to do this. They're just going to throw the thing back together as fast as they can and move on to the, the next job, their piecework. But if you're a DIYer, put it, the pan back on, wait the hour, tight, do, a, do a final tightening. Fill it with oil, make sure nothing is leaking before you put the last two covers on. The cost of this job. The pen, the greaser, pen shaking fluid, gloves, the cost was about $110. This is not an expensive job to do. I mean, it's well worth it financially speaking for a DIYer because you don't need any tools that are, are very special for this. So $110 is actually a steal for a job like this. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I hope something here is going to help you on your project when you need to go ahead and do that. Guys, until next time, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next project.